Hey Composer, Zach Heidi here. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to work with one of my favorite pieces, which is Joe Hisaishi's The Legend of Ashitaka, also known as Princess Mononoke's theme. This is one of those pieces that when you hear it, it feels like the floor drops from under you. It's just absolutely breathtaking. It utilizes the full orchestra and some really soaring strings, and I'm really excited to mock this up with you all. So as always, we're going to give it a listen first, and then we're going to do an imitation, talk about the harmony and some of the orchestration that goes behind it. As always, if you enjoy the video, you can leave a like and subscribe for more. So let's do a quick analysis on the harmony before we move on. We're in F minor. Six chord, seven. To the one. Minor five chord. Now this is basically the five of the five, which is called the secondary dominant. To the five. And then it kind of repeats more or less. Um, so we have this very, very natural minor harmony, so. So when we do our piece, we're going to imitate the similar kind of harmony and melodic movement, which is kind of this leaping movement. Okay, so let's come up with something kind of similar, maybe... Um okay, I kind of like that for a beginning. We'll get our tempo. A little faster, maybe even a little faster. Okay. Now I'm gonna land to that major five just because I want to. Let's see if we can change maybe, I'm not sure if I love that melody on the second half. Mm, let's change that. Close. Okay, so now there's an issue that we're gonna have where we're using this major chord. And if we use an E flat in the melody, then we have to stay away from that because that's gonna immediately clash. So let's just check out the melody in the beginning. So we start on an F. It's kind of like a little, you know. Now that could work. So let's change the beginning of the melody, reverse engineer it so it doesn't interfere later in the second half. Okay. And now we're going to take, make sure we don't get that E flat. Okay, and I remember this is just a sketch, so we're just roughing it out. Sometimes I like to make sure I'm using new chords from where I was before, so maybe we reharmonize it. That's really pretty. See if we can get to that in the full piece. Ooh, interesting. 
interesting. Okay. Da, 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 da. End it on a five, as if it was going to continue. So I, this is how I work, just block by block. Sometimes one measure, and I just follow my ear. So let's listen to what we got as a sketch. I sort of heard maybe. So this actually happens earlier. Okay, and maybe right here. a really cool John Williams E chord, half diminished, so G half diminished, meaning G, B flat, D flat, F. Let's add that in there. Okay, this is actually enough to get going, believe it or not. You know, obviously I could ple uh, flesh out the piano sketch more if I wanted to, um, but this is enough. Uh, and I, I don't really want to waste any time just sketching out on the piano if I know it's just going to go to the orchestra. So I usually would start from this point. So let's now work on the orchestral part. So first things first, we're just going to get the strings in here. Um, I think primarily we'll start with the strings. So let's get our violin uh, doing the melody. Pretty much just right as is. And we'll even get it, the octave up actually, um, just for extra push. That was a really good take. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna quantize, adjust the first note basically, because everything else will be quantized that way with my negative delay. Um, and we can basically copy paste this for the most part. So let's copy it over to violin two, uh, have them play the octave down, except for the second half. You see where they, the violin one jumps down, so we actually wanna have this go an octave up to basically be in unison. Um, we will also give that two violas, whole thing, um, but we'll jump the octave down for the second half, I believe. Um, maybe not, actually, because it's going to jump down. Yeah, we'll keep it where it is. So we should have three octaves in the beginning and then two. Yep, exactly. Um, I believe that the Mononoke soundtrack also uses winds on the second half, if I remember right. <laughs> Yeah, it does. So we're gonna actually also copy paste. This is why I like using one library. It just makes this so much easier. Um, copy the violins. Let's paste it over to the flute an octave up um, to, to grab that missing octave. Let's do flute two an octave lower. So flutes are in octaves. That lower octave, we're gonna double with an oboe. Um, let's also maybe double it with clarinet and see how that sounds. Maybe a little bit more support on the top. Maybe we can actually have uh, f two flutes doing the upper melody. Let's see. 
So now we have two flutes on the top and an oboe and clarinet on the bottom. Let's see that with the strings. I think that'll work for now. Um, we'll see if we want to change that. Okay. Now, if I notice anything that's weird in the melody, we can always uh, tweak that as we go. Let's move on to the bass. So the bass is going to be um, pretty much just punching out those low chords, just holding. Okay. And in, including the second half, because if I remember right, the pulsing that's happening, bum, 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 is not in the bass. Yeah, the bass is just giving us some support in basically the ground level. It's just grounding it. So we're just going to do the bass. Okay, now obviously I have to breathe when I do the breath controller, so I'll just draw over the parts where I breathe. Um, although I like the breath controller because it gives you an indication of uh, when your lines should breathe, particularly for winds and brass. Okay, lastly for the strings, we're gonna grab the cello, which is pretty much just doing movement, so do, 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 do. So we're gonna make up a line. Let's see if I can remember that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, one more try. Okay, that works. Um, again, just arpeggiating the lines more or less. Um, I think here I'd like them to go divisi. So. One line doubling the bass an octave higher. And to support that, um, the chordal movement that's going on, ba -da, I want ba -da. So I'm gonna have the violas. Ba -da. Now we're gonna lose the viola in the melody, if you notice right here, like there's gonna be a split. But because the violins are doubling each other, we could maybe pull one violin down to cover that missing space so that the, the melody is continually going in octaves. Where would be a good spot to start that? Maybe here? Nah, because we're going to lose the F. Let's try this. So jump down. Mmm, a little heavy on that. So let's maybe swap the viola and violin. So, da da. So the viola is going to carry more in that da, 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 because the viola is in a lower register. So because it's higher in its register, it's going to sing more. So if we pull the violin two to, to do bottom, it should be a little bit uh, more subdued. 
It's subtle, it's subtle difference. We can even push up the modulation a little bit. Let's even have the bass go, duh, yum. I think that'd be kind of nice. And maybe have everybody go portamento there on that second. Let's see if that's too much. No, it's pretty subtle. I think it's cool. Okay, we can move on now. So I remember French horn was taking the melody um, as well. That's awfully high. Is that really where it was? I see, because we go... I mean, that's really pushing it. We could maybe give it to trumpets instead. This is where kind of your arrangement will dictate different choices. You could do the horn, but that's that's really pushing it. I think that'll sound a little better. So we'll maybe swap the roles. So where the horn was doing the counter melody, if you remember. Right, right, right here, the trumpet, rather. Dun, 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 dun. We'll give that to the horn so they can switch in our arrangement. So. Also, I remembered I wanted to do major. Let's have it do da 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 Okay. Um, also, just because I am going to forget, let me do that horn line. So it's basically just kind of like... Grabbing something on top. Maybe we can double the cello up the octave. So. And I also think the horns are doing some kind of like supporting harmonic roll. We can also do um, octave displacement. So. Let's try something like that. That's gonna get in the way. That E was kind of feeling like it was interfering. Now we'll see if this is like too active or not. A little, a little interfering. Duh. 
da, 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 da. That's cool. I'm just kind of playing through the melody in my head. Something like this. Got to really fine tune this. If it just drops there. Also want to give a breath. I think here. Breathing is really important. I really wanted to do that. Breath. Ooh, this could be nice. I think this will work. Okay. Now there's a lot more we could do, obviously. Let's move um, to the second half. Basically having the horns just blum, 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 blum. We're just gonna do staccato and then adjust. Probably staccato and then sforzando. Dun 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 Okay. Um and then get the ending. We're just gonna again have them sustain, I think. Yeah. We're gonna keep some um, continuity in the piece, so we've only used two horns so far at most, so let's keep it that way. Okay, grab that. Da -da. I think that should be good for horns. Let's now grab the trombones, which are basically just gonna hold out the chords that the cello was rolling. We're gonna pass on that lower line, because that's pretty low, over to a bass uh, trombone. Maybe not, actually. Let's give it another listen. Sounds good. 
Um, so we didn't need the base trombone after all. We just use regular trombones and we'll get the tuba basically just doubling the bass. Okay. Now let's see what the brass is doing in the second half other than the horns. So I hear the trombones going mm, bum bum mm, bum bum. I could hear the trumpet coming in maybe here again. Just for some support. Just that part. Ta -da. Okay, now let's just check our voicing. Sometimes I'll improvise these things in and then I'll want to check and make sure that's not too cluttered sounding, so. Like that's pretty low. One more, one more listen. Da 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 da. Let's move bottom. So we keep these nice open voicings. Do, do, do. Maybe we can cut so we can just go to two trombones. Bum, bum. So we can sort of thin it out as it goes. So I'm just working to make sure that the voicings actually work all the way through, and I think they do. This is kind of extra, honestly, um, but it's a really good practice. So we're losing a voice in the trombones, and we're staying consistent with that. So the logic that you have in your orchestration should stay consistent with itself. You shouldn't just jump and do like five trombones out of nowhere if you don't need to. It's getting quieter, too, so we want to thin that out as we go. Um, okay. I think that's all that's left is the first half of the woodwinds and then percussion. So the woodwinds in the beginning, it's hard to hear, but they're doing like bum 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 bum. If you listen. Let's grab that. Um, also, I haven't done much of the bassoons. In fact, I haven't done any of the bassoons. So we'll make sure we get that too. Let's start with oboes because I really hear them. So again, just like with the with the um, cello. We're just going to kind of do some sort of movement going on uh, to support the harmony. So if we listen to our harmony, we want to find like something that is going to work with this. So something like, I don't know. And it's okay if we have a little clash because it's going to be really hard to hear. Um, so let's do... Um, 
Let's even double that with clarinet, because that's definitely going to get buried. So... And actually, I'm going to show you a technique. So I want to work this out bit by bit. So this is where I'll use like step input, for example. Um, and it's kind of nice because you can actually just work note by note. So dun, 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 dun. we're working with eighth notes. This is where I would kind of just work through. Dun 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 bum 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 I think that'll work, something like that. Just kind of improvising it. Do it to the clarinets. And maybe flutes an octave up for a little more punch. That sounds great. This whole piece can go a tad faster, so let's actually do that. And let's give the wind some breathing room, so... Now listen to how much more realistic this will sound with the with the brats included. Dun 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 dun. Let's actually really push it. Bum, 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 bum. That's cool. I like that. All right, let's hear that all together. Okay, cool. Let's grab the bassoons, and then lastly, we're going to tackle percussion. So a um, couple options. We could have it double potentially like the cello line that's going on because we have so much support already under the bass. Um, let's maybe, let's maybe do that and see how that sounds. So you could even just copy paste the cello if your um, template is set up well. Let's do that. I'm cool with that. And then the second half, let's just have them do what the horns were doing. So boom, 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 boom. Okay, have this jump down the octave. So let's just check that. So here's just the winds on their own, so you can really hear that. Okay, we got a stuck note somewhere, so we'll fix that real quick.
Um, I think I'd like the clarinet to jump down and not do the melody with the oboe. Um, so I'm going to change the orchestration just slightly. I'm going to do what I wanted to do before, which is flute up the octave and down the octave. Oboe in support. And then clarinet is going to actually join the bass with the harmonies. So it's going to go... Uh, Something like that. Sometimes I'll actually even reference, like I'll unlink so I can reference what's going on. I can see the bassoons now while I play the clarinets, which is helpful for me. One more try. Okay, got to change that da -da. just like before. Da -da. All right, lastly, let's get the percussion. Let's just double check our percussion here. Tiffany roll, crash. Okay, there's a really sick line in there um, that I really like. Do -da 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 -da. On the bottom, Do -da 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 -da. I'd really like to double that with the basses. I think that'd be cool. Do -da -da -da. And then we'll go bum. I really want that line in there. So let's also do that in the, maybe the tubas, and that's how the tubas can drop out. So. Okay, don't really like where it starts on the F, so let's actually just do wa da da do. Cool. I think really subtly, I actually hear um, some glockenspiel in the second half, but we'll see if we want to use that or not. So let's first of all get the timpani roll and the crash cymbal. And maybe even like a bass hit, because that would be cool. Sometimes I'll vary a little bit. Okay, so let's do. Upper octave. A little bit better of a swell, so we'll do like maybe. Let's do this actually. Let's start off with an attack. A little quieter. And a little bit more swell here. I'm very picky about the timpani rolls. Yep, sometimes you can even get a little, just like have it let go for a second before it hits. Just depends on how nice your timpani exit is. Mine's not great, so let's do that. Let's get a um, bass drum swell. So. Okay, and then the bass hit. 
and then a Piatti Hill hit. That really, that really does it there. Maybe no bass hit. I think it's kind of doesn't really need it actually. I think that might be it for like major percussion. There is a nice little hit at the very end in the glockenspiel, so. I don't really like that as much. Personally, I think I would actually do. Maybe on. Depends on how dramatic you want it to be. Another option could be like a soft timpani roll. So. Let's make that chime really quiet. Now let's see if we want to use any um, Celeste or Harp. Honestly, I don't hear any Harp. So let's actually change it up and not use Harp for this one. What a surprise. Okay, but we will do... Just in the beginning, I think I heard... Maybe just the second half. I don't think I want that actually, to be honest. Um, but we could maybe double this buried wind line in here with this with the Glock. I think that could work. Just depends on if we want to do it the whole time. Um, but let's try just copy pasting it and see. I would only want it to happen here, not on the downbeats. I think it's going to work, actually. Just depends on how often. I don't think any part here. Maybe second half? Maybe not even there. Yeah. Da, 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 da. And I'll do a cymbal swell. Maybe a bass hit on the second half. Nice and quiet one. Okay, cymbal swell. I can't help it. I got to use a uh, Mark tree. Just got to decide first half or second half. Let's do the second half just for fun. Yeah, a little quieter. Oh yeah. Glock there would be really nice to punch it out. I could hear harp maybe there. 
if we do harp, this is the systems of logic. If we have harp at the end, we're probably gonna wanna have harp integrated at some points in the beginning. But it's gonna work. So let's keep the harp, and let's that means let's do a kind of a harp glist in the beginning. So how long? Maybe. Oh, I think of the ending note. Okay, and then as you've probably seen before, I'll basically just either do a scale quantize or sometimes, honestly, these days, most of the time, what I just do is grab the notes that myself and do grab the sub position, shortcut in logic, which will just like grab every note that is similar. So every B will become a B flat. So I make sure I got natural minor. I think we're pretty much good to be honest. All right, I think that's gonna do it. So before I do a final playthrough, if you like this and you wanna support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. Uh, it really helps me out uh, because these videos get demonetized for sure. So it means a lot to me. Also, the MIDI is gonna be available to all of my patrons at the $10 level and up. So if you wanna support me on Patreon and get access to this MIDI and all the previous ones, you can do so with the link in the description. So without further ado, here is the final piece. I gotta say, I think this one came out really good. <laughs> I'm super proud of this. So I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you enjoyed, you can leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you as always for watching. I'm actually about to go on a vacation, uh, on a road trip. So I probably won't upload for the next week or two, um, or maybe I will, we'll see. But thanks so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video.